My name is Dave. I play the saxophone and my sole reason for being here on this YouTube channel is to help you with uh, your questions, your comments, and your goals to, uh, to get to, to where you want to get to with your saxophone. And I hope that this stuff helps you. I really, really hope that my content helps you. And if it does, or you have ideas about how to improve it, this is your channel. There's over 500 of you now. That's a majority. Let's do this. Send me your comments or questions or suggestions for future episodes here in Dave Goodland. All right, uh, davegoodsax at gmail.com or hit me in the comments below. I answer every one that I get, okay? And I appreciate you all so much. So so today, Evil Knievel and your saxophone solo, how, how are they two tie together? Yeah, I know. Well, I'm going to tie them together for you. i uh, been playing the alto sax, by the way. This is the Con, the 6M. And, you know, the more I play it, the more I like it. I'm a tenor sax player, but, but the alto sax is just so stinking much fun. And it occupies a different place in the solo hierarchy, right? Tenor sax is a little bit deeper of a voice, and, you know, we can hide, we can move around underneath, around, in and above, you know, the, the mid-range of the... But the alto sax, once you fire this baby up and launch your solo, that sound is, it's present, right? All right, so Evil Knievel. Who's that guy? Um, I think he might have been the first ever motorcycle stunt guy to, 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 to just just jump, you know, just just ride that motorcycle over you know many obstacles and, and land on the opposite side. And I think he, what Caesar's Palace comes to mind. I was watching a documentary about him the other night, and I was thinking, you know, he, he just. I was thinking about you, uh, all of you, and, and, and uh, those of you who are emerging soloists, and uh, you know a lot of the students who come here personally. And I was thinking, you know, Evil Knievel had this great showmanship about him, right? He would ride this Harley Davidson real loud motorcycle, go up a ramp, and sail up into the air, right? I mean, and, and fly over like, I mean, just like whatever they'd stacked up, f flaming, you know, logs or whatever, or buses. More and more each time, until he was in the air for a long time, and then he'd come down, and the goal was to hit the ramp, and quite often he didn't. He had really bad endings, lots of bad endings, and I think by the end of the day, his skeleton was mostly metal, you know, um, and things didn't go well for him, you know, and I, I'm not sure if that was a lack of planning, or if that was just, uh, I don't know, I really don't know. I, I, I'm not the kind of guy to jump a motorcycle. I know that a lot of people do amazing things now, that, you know, would not have been thought of in his day. Uh, but I think he was the first. And so it was the, it, it's, it's all the bad endings that he had. He would, he, would, he would miss the ramp or he would come up short on the ramp or the bike wouldn't be able, the motorcycle wouldn't be able to withstand the down pressure and it would come apart underneath him uh, or tires of blood, just all kinds of things. Because, you know, this is basically new territory. Well, that's kind of where you're at as an emerging soloist. How to get out of your solo is uh, is kind of new territory, isn't it? Yeah, it is. How do you finish this thing? And should it be? Yeah, you're not supposed to just keep playing. Was that a famous uh, quote from you know Miles Davis uh, when John Coltrane was in the band and John Coltrane would play these? Just I mean, solos that went on forever and ever and ever and ever. And I think other musicians began to complain or maybe say, "Hey, Miles, sup with John." And finally, Miles went to Mr. Coltrane, the master of the tenor sax, even then, and he said, dude, what do you do? You play, you play too many notes or something like that. Why, why do you play so, so much? And, and Mr. Coltrane allegedly said, uh, I, I don't know when to, how to stop. And, and Miles uh, allegedly said, cause, I mean, I wasn't there. I'm just reading all this stuff. And Miles allegedly said, well, just take the horn out of your mouth. Right? Well, that's not really a, you know, an ending to a solo, right? We'd like to tie things up neat, you know, with a bow, and then hand them to the next soloists in the, in the projection of soloists in whatever music we're playing. Now, a rock and roll solo is an entirely different animal than a blues solo or a pop music solo. A pop music solo, once again, is, uh, you know, is an entirely different animal than a funk solo. And a funk solo is a, is a, is a much different beast than a rhythm and blues or an urban jazz solo, which is, again, a much different animal than, than a jazz solo, right? So I'm talking about a solo that's got a beginning. Here's evil going up that ramp. 
firing that motorcycle. It's just, it's, it's cranking, right? And he leaves the ramp and he's in the air. All right, now, if you watched the last video, you've been writing out your solos and you have a starting point. You know how to start your solo. You're not gonna just ramble around notes and pray to the gods of saxophone that at least you hit some of the right ones. Or you're not gonna do a, a blues scale or whatever you know, advice you've been given in middle school or in other videos or by other, you know, whatever. You're not gonna do that. You're gonna, you're gonna write out a solo that's a modified version of the melody. So you know, you've got a plan, you've got a roadmap for how you're gonna start this piece. Now you're in the air! You're up here, and, and when Evil was up here, I suspect that was the thrilling moment when people were wondering, is this knucklehead gonna make it? And I think that's a place where you can leave the script a little bit and play for just a few minutes and, and maybe throw darts at the note board and hope you hit the right ones. You'll learn a lot in, in either case. You don't have to write out the whole solo, but just you know, sketch it and give yourself a little room to move around for a couple of measures. And be quiet for a couple of measures too. You know, play a couple of measures, be quiet for a measure, play a couple of measures, be quiet for a measure. And again, I'm assuming that you have some room to move around. We're talking about a solo. I just whack myself in the head with a mouthpiece. We're talking about a solo here where you have a little, you got a little room. You know, maybe maybe 12 bars, something like that, right? Not a not a rock and roll solo where you you're in and out, uh, but a but a but a solo where you have a little room to. So you know you can play around a little bit at the top of, but but coming back down again, how are you going to do that? Well, there's kind of a turnaround now, isn't there? Right? You're gonna, you know, if you're in blues, you've got to turn around. You got a four and a five chord. You can turn around and, and you want to acknowledge that, all right? And tidy that up so that you can end in perhaps on the like the five or the chord tone or in those chord tones. Or go back to the melody, whatever the melody was of the song that you're playing, and and go back to the the you know the the end of the turnaround, whatever the you know, the end of whatever the singer sang and repeat those notes. Easiest way out of the job, and it sounds clean, it's nice. You're not gonna hit the ramp and blow up in, into infinite you know, small pieces. And your band members are not gonna come to you and say, why does he play so much? No, it's gonna be a little bit more fun for you to have that nice ending. So you got a beginning, and now you got an ending, and you planned both of them. Now why is that? You know, because really cool guys, Men and women who play this music don't do that, do they, Dave? Of course we do. Of course we do. We all were told or tasked with by the better teachers of writing out our solos or crafting them and understanding what we were going to do, how we were going to start, what was going to happen in the midpoint, and how we were going to get out. We knew where we were at all times. We were comfortable in the environment of that rip current that is a band that is constantly moving. The band is constantly moving. We get comfortable in that by knowing that we have a map, all right? By knowing what we're gonna do. And that, in turn, gives us the freedom to branch out and goof off just a little bit, okay? Questions about this? We can dig a little bit deeper if you want to. Send me an email. Once again, Dave Good Sachs at gmail.com or leave me a comment below, okay? Love to hear from you, and I'm so grateful that uh, all of you are, are out there and subscribing to the channel. I, I'm just, I'm humbled and I'm grateful to be of service. And again, I, the reason I'm here is to, is to help out and pass along things that I've picked up on this long journey of saxophone-ness, starting when I was uh, 10, 11, 11, 11 years old. And uh, we started our own rock band after school and played uh, surf rock tunes. Uh, and, and that's, I've met a lot of people that have really shaped the way I play, and that's what I pass along to you. I, I, I make very little of this up, except the evil can evil connection, okay? But anyway, I mean, I, I honestly, I was thinking about that. A lot of my students really don't know how to get out of a you know, solo. Now, here's another thing that you can practice. Um, well, you know what, could I save that for the next, oh, here's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to tell you in another video is how to use backing, how to use, how to use backing tracks, okay? How to use them properly. Because there's, there's, there's a real problem with your basic, you know, blues and F backing track. There's a real problem. And I just picked that out. I mean, all of them that are just, just chord progressions over and over and over and over, there's a problem in there. 
I'm going to tell you what that is next time, all right? All right, got to go. Got to walk the dogs. Have a great day. See you later.